All right, listen, um, Coach Cap, Ryan Caparese, I'm thrilled to have you here for uh, a chat about motivation, about fitness, about health, about diet. So uh, welcome and introduce yourself. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Thanks for having me here today. Uh, yeah, Coach Cap, Cap Light Captain. Uh, Cap does come from my last name, Cap Reese. Uh, growing up, was a baseball athlete, played professional baseball and independent baseball. And then it just kind of like warped into becoming a fitness professional. And then being a fitness professional turned into being this big motivational mindset guy where I created this brand called Making Time Count. And, and you know, I met you. Um, you were my, my coach at, uh, at a local training facility. And um, listen, you were always motivational, high energy, and that's all someone can ask for in someone, uh, a personal trainer. So tell everyone, do you do any personal training anything like that? Yes. So I do uh, one-on-one on the side at a place called The High Performance. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching people. Usually sessions are about an hour to 90 minutes, whether it's HIIT training, strength training, even mobility training. People just want to feel better everyday life because we all know we want to have kids at some point and you want to be able to just lift your baby up. And some people, they're like, holy crap, holding a 15-pound baby gets a little bit heavy. That's why I like to coach functional movements. That's very important. You want to have that special moment in your life. So sometimes fitness, yes, it's about getting in shape, but it's just about feeling and moving better. You know, um, it's so funny because a, so a few years ago, uh, I hadn't been working out as much as I used to, and I was starting to get, you know, soft. And I went to my gym, and I said, you know what? I need to get a personal trainer. I'm going to try it. You know, and so uh, I want to talk a lot about today about personal training, about what people can do if they're in their 30s or 40s or 50s. You know, we got a ton of lawyers that watch this uh, this channel. And so how can people kind of just get started, get their feet wet? So first thing, just like Nike says, just do it. You got to hop into it. You have to force yourself to do it. And more importantly, it's honestly a time management thing because a lot of people's excuses is, I don't have time. So sometimes just waking up early, setting that alarm for 4.30, 5 a.m., waking up, getting it done is the best way to jumpstart your day. Fitness is what's going to keep you healthy. It really is. You don't have to go in there and hit personal records and lift heavy. No, fitness is what's going to get the blood going, the lymphatic function that's going to keep you younger, that's going to keep your skin younger. Things we always want because we know some people get that cosmetic surgery, but and all in all, you can just go to the gym, and that is your cosmetic surgery at a cheaper price. Yeah, at a cheaper price, and you're going to feel better. So, you know, I, I when I started working with a personal trainer, I got up. I was getting up. I think I met him at 6 a.m. We'd work out for about 30 minutes. It wasn't a crazy long workout. It was a 30-minute workout, and I felt amazing for the rest of the day. So, um, and one of the things that I learned at my age when I started doing it, I was probably 35 or so, 34, was all the different exercises I never did before. So is like, what are some of the things, I guess, personal trainers, how do you assess the, a person's ability? And what do you do? How, like walk me through the steps. So first time, you know, I meet someone for the first time, you come in, hey, hello. And I kind of want to see how their body moves. I want to see any imbalances. Do they have good stability, trunk stability? Does their core fire correctly? Can they do a push up correctly? Do they even know how to do a push up correctly? What about their squat? Are they staying on their toes? Are they coming off on their heels? Is their chest leaning forward? An overhead squat. I put a little dowel over the head. And I try to see, can they maintain that same posture while it's over their head in a squat? Usually the first workout with me is an assessment, but it's, an, it's a workout assessment. So I'm going to make sure your heart's jumping, everything's going. But I take a look on everything from the ground up. So I'm looking at ankles, knees, hips, trunk, chest, posture, neck position. And I'm looking at that the entire time we're working out. And at the end of the workout, I tell the person, okay, all right, this is what I see in your ankle. When you're squatting, you're coming a lot on your toes. So that tells me you have an imbalance or you can't stay on your heels because you're firing your quads too much. You're not even using your glutes and your hamstrings. They're like, wait, what? And then some people don't even know what their hamstring is half the time. You start telling them what a new muscle is. Like, wait, I didn't, I didn't know that. Even like with pull-ups, you use your lats and pull-ups. Most people just pull all shoulders and biceps. They have no idea they're not even using their lats. Yeah, and, and it's so important, this idea of getting someone to actually show you the right way to do things. And the funniest thing, and I was thinking about this this morning, and I was leaving the gym. I just I just did a full leg day, all right? I crushed my legs. I'm pushing this lead. I'm doing squats. 
I realized, I thought about it and I said, like before I started working with a personal trainer, I had never done a squat or a deadlift. I went 35 years. I used to work out in college and I'd go all the time and then I thought about it. I never did a squat or deadlift. I just would, you know, bench press, you know, do biceps, maybe do some leg extensions, but like I had no idea how to do a squat until I worked out with a, with a personal trainer. And now that's my go-to. You know, what are like in your mind, you know, for, for, you know, what are the best exercises? I think, you know, someone who's in their thirties or forties or fifties, you know, some of the best ones that they can be doing just like an all around, you know, good workout exercise. So, you know, keep it nice and simple. Obviously push-ups are great. Anything you're pulling, whether it's a bent over row, like you said, a deadlift, we need a deadlift because when you go to the, the airport and you have to go down and pick your luggage, it's probably a 50 pound bag. If you're gone for two weeks, you're deadlifting that bag up to pull it up sometimes. And squats are very important. And then core. I don't think enough people are doing core. Holding planks. People do not hold planks enough. I think people get it twisted and forget your core is just not the front side of your body. Your core is a cylinder. It wraps around your entire body. So as people age and they get older, they're like, yo, I got low back pain. My back's bothering me. You probably never fired that back side of your core. You've always been grown and told your whole life, front side, front side, front side. No, it's all backside. So I would say planks, squats, push-ups, anything that you're pulling from the ground up are your four main things you want to do every time in a workout. And what I think, and tell me what you see in your, in your clients, because I know there are so many people out there that they're at work, they're sitting all day, they're exhausted, they're eating bad foods, they're not healthy, they're not feeling good. I mean... I, I could see a drastic change when I started working out in the mornings and then putting in time and then feeling better throughout the day. I mean, what do you see with your clients as far as their health, their diet, their their emotional well-being? You know, what do you see when they start working out? Honestly, energy. I see their energy just go up. All of a sudden, they're saying, bro, I have way more energy throughout the day. I, I feel better. I can move better. I can twist better. I don't feel as achy. And we're all chasing that. We don't want to feel achy because as we age, we're going to feel achy. Why? Well, sometimes, like you said, that diet is because the food you're putting in your system. I don't think people realize either how much food or oils have inflammatories in them that we're using. Uh, but it's very important. We got to work out because working out is it's lubricating that muscle joint. And, you know, I see like a snowball effect, too, when you start to work out, you start to put the time in, you, you start to lift weights or do these exercises you feel good, and then when you start feeling good, you realize, I don't want to eat that crap. I don't want to go to McDonald's. I don't want to go to Burger King. I don't want to eat the, you know, a deep-fried Chick-fil-A sandwich. You want to start eating healthy. You want to eat grilled chicken. You want to eat salads. And all of a sudden, like, everything starts coming together. Right. We got to avoid fast foods. Yeah, anything that has a drive through don't do it. I get it. It's, it's easier now because in the tip of our thumbs, we can go on Uber Eats or some food app, and we can order food. But anything that's just downright, ugh, we really need to avoid and avoid. Stop saying like, oh, but it's quick and it tastes good. But clearly you don't feel good. You're, you're neglecting how you feel for just a quick hunger. We got we to gotta be better. We have to make time count. All right, well, listen, let's think making time count also. Tell everyone a little bit about making time count. What is that? So making time count, it's, it's a big mindset motivation. It's self-awareness. It's you thinking your thoughts throughout the day. It's you questioning yourself. Am I in the right mindset? Am I actually making time count towards what I really want to do? To me, where making time count came from, so I was playing college baseball, and it was a crazy accident. So I'm pitching on the mound, and I took a line drive off the head. Season was done. And you're talking about I had an opportunity maybe go play pro baseball that year, but as soon as that ball hit my head, took two steps, fell on the ground, unconscious, was just done. Finally came back after like five minutes. They're telling me, hey, you're, you're pretty much done for the season. I went through ups and downs, ups and downs, struggled so bad, doubt, worry. That summer going into that next season, I'm sitting there with a buddy of mine. He's like, bro, you, you got to use a story for something. You really do. He goes, you're, you're very passionate. You've always been this motivating guy. Maybe try to figure out something through fitness. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, you know, what do people really need to do when we're talking about fitness and mindset? And it hit me. I'm like, they got to make time count. They have to make time count. So I've had this idea for the past five to seven years now where it popped up to my head. This has actually been the first year that I've actually gone 
full force with it. And I actually want to encourage people through my brand, Making Time Count, to have a better mindset in your life, find out what you want, use fitness to help that. Because when we're using fitness, we're creating dopamine, we're increasing our serotonin levels, and actually find out what is actually going to my body with nutrition. Because what you feed yourself is how you're going to feel yourself. You know, we only have a, a little amount of time during this precious life that we have. And so making the time count while we're here is just, it, it is everything. It really is everything, you know, from the time that you wake up in the morning until the time you go to bed, whether you're going to be, find that time to work out, find that time to spend with your family, find the time to eat healthy foods and have quality time with, you know, your friends and your family, right? I mean, that's, that has to be. It's huge. We need, and you know, like I said, and like the way you think, I think a lot of people nowadays because of social media and everything that's just going on in the world, we kind of get outside ourselves and we're not even thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about worrying. We're thinking about trying to keep up with another person rather than just that you versus you moment. Let me just talk to myself. What am I thinking right now? Why am I thinking that? How can I change that thinking? And actually sitting down and setting an appointment with yourself to make time count to make yourself better. Yeah, the personal reflection is is like it it's absolutely important to sit back and say and and take it take a an inventory of what's going on in your mind, how you feel. And I also think it's important um to have someone like a coach, someone to help you get through some of this stuff to train you and like I know you do personal training, you help people one on one, you help people in in groups and we'll give out your know, your information at the end of the uh, at the end of this video, but one of the things I do in business is I have a business coach, right? I set aside time with someone every other week or so, every two weeks to sit and do an inventory, go through, look at my goals, what have I accomplished, what I have not accomplished, and what can we do to, to, to push forward because we always set these, these limitations in our mind like we can't do something. But, but the truth is you can achieve so much more than you, your mind even thinks you can. I mean, you think about like Navy SEALs, what they do to get to get to where they are and the things that they, you know, like you think of there's just so much you can accomplish. And I think one of the most important things is to have a coach, to have a trainer, to have someone that can help guide you through every, whether it's fitness, whether it's business, whether it's life. Oh, yeah. It's so important. Very important because, you know, I'll take, for example, I had a client the other day. He comes in and he's got back issues right now, right? He's got an L4, L5, L6, slight bulging disc. And he's been going to a physical therapist for a while now. And he's kind of, they've just been doing the same things over and over. And don't get me wrong. It's great to rinse and repeat. Sometimes you have to get better at doing that same movement. But he's got no progress. So when he first came and saw me, and I'm like, well, are you lifting right now? He goes, no. I'm like, why are you not lifting? Well, they told me not to lift. They said it's going to harm me. I'm like, you're wrong. You got it twisted. You have to lift. That's the only way we're going to have a stronger body. When you're lifting, you're creating more bone density. If you're not lifting, there is no bone density. Nothing can make those bones strong again. We've been working for about two months now. He stands taller. He's walking a lot better. He's like, bro, my pain is probably about 80% gone all of a sudden. I'm like, dude, it's because you're lifting. And that goes back to the idea like you need a coach. You need someone who's going to tell you, no, this is what you really need because not a lot. We've been lied to a lot our whole life. We have. Yeah. I listen, and it's funny because you know from the gym when we, we at the uh, at the last uh, place that I was working out at, uh, I ended up having a, a a hernia surgery. Right. I mean, I was working out hard, working out, working out, and I didn't. I had the hernia was from a long time ago, and but it got to a point where I needed to get it fixed. You know what I mean? And it was like, listen, I had to get surgery, and I took it easy for a little bit. I came back and I weaned in a little bit, and now I'm back. You know, it took it was probably a month or two months to come back full throttle. You can't just let things in your life stop you. If you got a bad back, if you got a herniated disc, if you got an injury to your knee, you got to get back to it and get someone to help you get through it so that you get back to baseline. Don't even get back to baseline. Go beyond baseline. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, for example, let me ask you, you know, how many times were you in class and I'm around in there and you're doing a movement you don't want to do? But you hear me motivating you to do it. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to stick with it. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? Absolutely. How do you get, listen, if you don't like pull-ups, how do you get better at pull-ups? Do more pull-ups. You know, I was just telling you earlier, like, I went to the gym this morning. I, like, I never done it before. I started working out with a personal trainer. He would make me push the sled. And that is the, one of the hardest exercises. But what I realized is 
Why did I hate it so much? Because it really hurts and it really works you out. And it gets you exhausted. And so this morning I went back there and I said to myself, this is what the trainer told me to do. I don't like doing it, but you know what? I'm pushing the sled today. And I did. And I felt great, you know? And it's like, that's what you have to do is get that mindset and at least have someone that can guide you and teach you the right way to do it. Exercises that you have never done before. Um, and then and then once you know how to do them, you can do them. Yeah. And it's just like, it's building that muscle in your brain that's sharpening your mindset for other things you're going to do outside the gym throughout the day. Because you know throughout the day, every single day you run into a task that you've been avoiding, that you don't want to do, might be brand new, or you've just been laying it off. But because you went to the gym and you already did something you didn't want to do, you've already been sharpening your brain right there. So that moment comes, you've already done something this morning, you don't even realize it neurologically, you already tapped in. So that workout, that motion of pushing the sled just pushed you to actually do that task for the day. Bro, the brain is a powerful tool, and people aren't talking about it enough. Yeah, yeah. All right, so listen, since I got you here, now I got an expert. I want to talk to you a little bit about supplements, okay? So here's, I'm going to tell you what I take, and then you can tell me if there's anything that you like. So I, I will supplement with uh, protein, protein powder, okay. right? And I will supplement with uh, amino acids, essential amino acids. I don't take the BCAAs. So tell us, what is some of the things that I guess, because not all, like our bodies, the foods that we're eating, it's, we're not getting everything naturally. There are things that you can do to supplement. How do you feel about it? Tell me. Honestly, the best supplement is food itself. It really is. Uh, the whole, you know, drink a shake, it's going to replace it. Yes, you know, if you're on the go and it's quick, do it. Because if you're not drinking protein after your workout, why'd you work out? You, you, you got to understand, when you're working out, you're burning calories, right? And those calories you're burning, more than likely they're coming from your fat storage. That's going to run out at some point. And once it's done running out, where's it going to pull from next? Your muscle. And if you have not drinking protein after your workout to replenish your muscle, you're screwed. It's going to go to your muscle. But if you drank that protein shake, you're going to keep burning calories throughout the day and it's going to pull from your fat storage. So, yeah, it's very important you drink a protein shake after you get done working out. As far as supplements go, amino acids, that's amazing. That's great. That's building blocks. That's atoms. We want to rebuild that. Branch chain amino acids, just as good. I think I want to go a step further, though, is... Are people taking multivitamin? I take a daily multivitamin. That's very important because there's certain vitamins that you're probably not getting throughout the day, like a potassium. Some people don't like to eat bana bananas, but you need potassium. We need that to live. Um, I'm learning this new thing, beef organs, liver. Like, yo, what, what? I can't believe people need to eat that to survive. I've actually been, I discovered this, uh, the lion's diet, the whole carnivore diet, eat more ruminant meat. It's working for me all of a sudden. I feel more energy. I feel alive because I'm actually putting more protein into my body. So supplement-wise, I think people need to have a routine. Uh, I think a lot of people, like, do you take creatine right now? Okay, so creatine is actually really good to take before and after the workout sometimes. And people are like, oh, but it's going to hold a lot of water in me. Well, yeah, it's going to hold water in you because you need water to keep your muscles hydrated. Yeah, yeah, it's not a, ne it's not a negative to take creatine and hold some water. It's not a negative at all. No, no, because what it's going to do, it's going to give you more energy for those muscles to keep working day in and day out. Supplements, I also take magnesium. I take magnesium every night. Huge. Which kind of magnesium are you taking? Right now I'm taking the, the I think it's the Brain Chainsaw One brand. Um, you take it at nighttime? I take it at nighttime. Great I take time. two magnesium. I think it's called citrate. I forget what it is. I took it last night. It was so funny because I was talking to a surgeon the other day and I told him I've taken magnesium and he's like, Are you going to the bathroom a lot? You know, it's going to make you go to the bathroom. But apparently, it, I wasn't, you know, I take it for sleep and uh, and I think it helps tremendously. I take I take the magnesium at night. I also take a couple uh, amino acids at night. I sleep like a baby. But one of the big things I take magnesium for is just like, your electrolytes. I don't think enough of us realize that we're actually burning a lot of electrolytes throughout the day. And sometimes drinking a Gatorade, it may not be the best, but if you take the magnesium, it's going to help you. Got it. Got it. 
And then let me see, try to think what else I take right now. Well, I'm checking off the checking off that I now I need to take a, a multivitamin. I'm gonna start taking creatine, although creatine messes with my stomach a little bit sometimes. Okay, so, so what brand do you have you been yeah, taking? Yeah, I gotta I maybe switch the brand. So sometimes the brand is huge. Um I take a company called Thorn right now. A lot of pro athletes I train, they use that. What's the multivitamin? Let everyone know. What's your so multivitamin? So multivitamin, I'll say just keep it simple. I'll go to Costco, I'll get the Kirkland brand. Got it. All right, <laughs> all right. It's the Costco okay, the Kirkland. It's the Costco brand. yeah, Kirkland. Yeah. yeah, it's simple, it's cheap, it's cost effective. Yeah, I think I was taking Centrum, I think, is a that's another good one. Yeah, that's not bad at all either. Yeah, I like the gummies right now. Sometimes it's easy. I like that little chew sweet taste because I don't really eat anything sweet right now. Water. How important is water? Well, it's water is very important. All right, I'm not saying you have to drink a gallon a day. Preferably, yeah, that'd be awesome. You might be going to the restroom a lot, um, but at least like let's say like this like 12 ounce bottle of water, at least like six to eight of them a day. Six to eight a day. Six to eight, at least. Man, I'm like, I, I'm. I do six to eight Red Bulls. That's my problem. <laughs> no, I don't caffeine. do six to eight Red Bulls. I don't do six to eight Red Bulls. But I do a lot. So, um, well, listen, man. Uh, there's so many different things that we could talk about. Um, in health and fitness and motivation. How how can people get in touch with you to to reach out? And uh, get in touch and get some advice, get some instruction. Tell us uh, a little bit about your contact information. Yeah, so honestly, the best way to reach out to me is on Instagram, at underscore Coach Cap. That's the easiest way to do it. I'm on there a lot throughout the day. That's where I get most of my notifications. I keep my notifications turned on because that's actually where a lot of people will comment and ask for advice for me. Uh, I'm on there pretty much <laughs> almost from like 9 a.m. to almost 9 p.m. most of the time. It's, it's in my phone. It's on my pocket. And that's the easiest way to get in contact with me if you want to train with me, if you want better mindset tips, if you want to talk about nutrition, or if you just want to hire a mindset coach in itself where we can actually sit down, have a conversation every week and kind of plan what you want to do. And you'll help push them through it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Every step of the way. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So people reach out. It's, it's underscore Coach Cap. That's Instagram. And I know that you're planning to put together a YouTube channel. And then you also have a website, right? It's, uh, is it makingtimecount.com? Yeah, it's, uh, it's mtcmakingtimecount.com. MTC, we're reading it, say it to me again. It's mtcmakingtimecount.com. So it's long. <laughs> got, well, there's an M, it's not making time, got makingtimecount.com. You got MTC in the front. Yeah, but I got the MTC in the front. Oh, yeah. All right. And then I know they can get apparel things. I know you're yep. wearing your shirt. You got your, got the shirt uh, your on logo. Today. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, man. And so, uh, and then where is it that you train? Um, will you visit, do you actually go out and meet with people at their communities if they have a community gym or will you meet them at uh, or at the hive like where, where can you train with yeah people? definitely so what i do is uh meet people at the hive we can meet at a park or if you have a home gym i'll, co I'll come do a house call that's awesome Heck that's yeah. awesome well listen man i'm thrilled that you came we got coach cap right the guy the motivator i watch your instagram and i think it's amazing and another thing that people could do as, you know with your instagram is you go on there and you do these exercises that are kind of unconventional exercise the exercise that I don't normally do when I go to the gym and I say, I got to do that. I got to do that extension, that leg extension. I got to do that balance on the BOSU ball, whatever that is. Those are the things that will get you to the top of your game. It will. It'll make you feel better because, you know, when you're single leg, you're balancing. And balance is everything. Everyone knows when you're walking, you don't want to feel unbalanced, especially when sometimes you have, maybe have sciatic nerve pain and you, you're taking every step and you're like, oh, crap. Being on one leg is going to fix that. All right, underscore Coach Cap on Instagram. They'll visit you. They'll reach out. So everyone that's watching this, all the lawyers and everyone else, the professionals, people who ever watch this, reach out to Coach Cap because he will help you with the training, the motivation, the diet, the exercise, all of it. Heck yeah, man. That's me. All right, man. Listen, thanks for coming in, dude. Appreciate it, Eric. Thanks for having me, dude. Awesome, man.